Hello. This is a continuation to the series um, in which we talk about Dan4JS on Node-RED. Uh, it's just as applicable on JS, uh, really. And uh, the functions don't really change. And so what we are going to do today is uh, we are going to look at the series portion of Dan4 in more depth. The last time we saw how to create a series merge them into a data frame and uh, do a few very simple things with the data frame. So now let's look at uh, working with those series a little, uh, manipulating them to some degree and uh, really understanding the foundation of uh, what a series is and uh, all the things that Danfo uh, provides for, that, uh, for those series. So let's look at uh, how to create a series and uh, initially we have weights uh, it's just an array four floats in it it's pretty simple and um, so over here we just created uh, a series out of it this is the Danfo series uh, nothing really to it now uh, the interesting thing is now I want to see the properties of the series so how do I really do that that is basically what data type it has, uh, what is the index, uh, and if I can separate a few things like that. So let's see what we have available here in properties. So one is the data type. As we could see from this uh, series, all of them are afloat. Uh, the index values, which are 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, the values as is. Uh, from the data frame and uh, the shape so this is a four cross one array uh, so how do we look at those properties over here it's basically just calling on these uh, items uh, it's basically dot d type for the data type of your series dot index to get the uh, uh, get the index dot values and dot shape uh, I feel the most important one out of this is dot shape because as we progress through the series, uh, shape is the one that really plays a very important part when you want to merge different different uh, series, um, if you want to create different operations and especially considering the fact that uh, Danfo is really meant to work uh, with a base like TensorFlow. Um, the shape of your tensors is something that is very very important and it will keep coming up and inconsistency in that is um, one of the most confusing things ever so debugging using shape here and there is it's, it's a very convenient thing uh, now look at now let's look at converting this data frame uh, the series so this was uh, floats the uh, so these are all floats and over here we have a bunch of integers so it's it's pretty simple um, so you just have this function called as type that you can run over the whole of your series and in this case I wanted to convert my float into an integer so it's just a dot as type uh, in 32 um, you can typecast it however you want um, and uh, conversions are fairly simple as long as uh, in, in case there is an explicit conversion involved uh, that that's more on a case by case uh, basis uh, something important to note over here is uh, you can have a bunch of data types also converting into a into a different set of data types and uh, that is a more advanced usage uh, we are not really going to get into that uh, the next part over here is basically looking at indexing and uh, so what is indexing indexing is basically how you access the data um, irrespective of the values uh, just how it is stored in the series and uh, so let's let's just see that so like pandas we have this a uh, function called ILOC in here. Uh, let's look at what sliced uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 are. So this is 
the series that we are working with. So an ILOC is something pretty um, interesting because you can isolate values based on uh, their index values. So in this case, the index I have here is like the one provided by default, which is a bunch of integers, they're contiguous. And um, yeah, it's just increasing by one. There are a bunch of uh, manipulations you can do with the index. Uh, you can have them increasing by a different number. Uh, you can add uh, characters if you want, uh, more prominent identifiers there. And uh, so let's look at this example. For example, sliced one is ILOC of 0, 0,2. So that basically returns the values which are in the 0th position and the 2nd position in the series. Slice 2 is, um, so 0, colon 3, um, it's, so this is more of a Pythonic representation here. The reason why you have to put it in quotes is, well, Danforth tries to work with a lot of explanations uh, which are similar to pandas, but uh, some of them just have restrictions on the front of how these particular expressions work in JavaScript. So it's not unusual to see values being passed into a function in a string even when it seems like it shouldn't be a string but that's just because uh, you're trying to find a good representation of it from the pythonic version and over here we have a 0 colon 3 so that's basically from 0 up to 3 not including 3 so that's basically the first three elements 0 1 2 as we can see here um, now the interesting part of ILOC is you can also have a bunch of functions inside it. So less than 4. So the LT stands for less than and 4 is the value. So basically everything in this series gets compared to the value 4. The values smaller than 4 are the ones that are uh, returned in slice 3. And it's 1.09 and 3.18. So this is also because so when you do a less than operation on this, uh, it basically gets converted into a bunch of true false, true false. So for example, um, zero and one will be true, true, two, three will be false, false uh, because of the condition of less than four. And then Danfo just takes care of the rest of it. Now this is a more interesting thing where I am actually adding a physical index into it which is a bunch of characters like this ABCD and uh, now I just want to use the LOC function here which is also to access indice, indices uh, in different positions so like A and C so that's basically in this case ABCD is mapped to this so that's A, B, C, D A and C will return 0 and 2 because well it maps to 1.01 .01 uh, 1.019 and 